Hi, welcome to my channel, Jabber Time. Today I'm gonna go over uh, square root of three as a rational number. And I do have like four or five videos after that, short videos. I'll link them down below. They're interesting uh, to see. It's like math, uh, riddles and puzzles. Let's get started. So show that square root of three is irrational. We're going to start with assuming that square root of three is rational and try to reach a contradiction. There are integers u and v. Whenever I say u and v, it sounds like you and me. There are integers u and v that share no common factors such that square root of three is u over v where u and v are relatively prime. So we're assuming it's rational, as you could see, but we want to take advantage that they are relatively prime. Of course, if they're not, we could reduce it and make it relatively prime. For example, in case u over v is 10 over 12, we could divide by 2 and make it 5 over 6. So eventually, we could take the simplest one, 5 over 6, where 5 and 6 are relatively prime. I know 6 is not prime, but they're both relatively prime. They have nothing in common. Square root of 3 equals u over v. We're assuming that we have that, which is not true, and that's what we're going to prove. Saying that, that means it's rational. This means if I square both sides, I get 3 equals u square over v square. And if I cross multiply, I get u square equals 3 times v square. But if u square is 3 times something, that means it's a multiple of 3. Any integer can be written as a product of primes. Let's show, let's show that 3 is part of u, not just u square. Let us look at the prime factorization of u. It could be n primes. We don't know them. So let's call them p1 times p2 times p3 times all the way up to pn. If that is u, then u square, this part right here, will be that much multiplied by itself. Rearranging, we will have p1 times p1, p2 times p2, p3 times p3, all the way to pn times pn, and they're all multiplied together. Now, we'll go back to this. u squared equals 3 times v squared. u squared is a multiple of 3, we could see that. It's 3 times some kind of integer. So 3 must be one of these numbers. u square is written this way, but it's a multiple of 3, so 3 must be one of these numbers. If 3 is p1, just for simplicity, then u square equals 3 times 3 times p2 times p2 times p3 times p3 all the way times pn times p sub n, which means also that u by itself is 3 multiplied by p2 by p3 all the way pn. So this right here, if I jump from that uh, 3 is a factor of u squared, and say that 3 is a factor of u, this might not be clear for enough students. So if you take the time and do it formally, you will see that 3 is also a multiple or a factor of u itself. Which means u is a multiple of 3. So we could write u as 3 times k, where k is an integer. Well, that's a good accomplishment. We started with u square equals 3 times v square, saying that 3 is a factor of u square. 
we concluded also that 3 is a factor of u itself. This shows that 3 is a prime factor of u square and thus of u. So the focus here is u equals 3 times k, where k is an integer. Let's go back to this right here one more time. u square equals 3 times v square. But here we came up with u equals 3k, so I'm going to take advantage of that and plug it in right here. 3k to the second, instead of u, as you could see right there, equals 3 times v square. Square both sides, or apply the square. That gives you 9k square equals 3v square. Now, if you divide both sides by 3, I get the simplest form, 3k squared equals v squared. So let's rearrange this, because we want to focus on v squared. Or I could say v squared equals 3 times k squared. When we started right here, all this right here gave me uh, the conclusion that when 3 is a factor of u squared, we showed that 3 is a factor of u. Now, 3 is a factor of v squared in the same way. I'm not going to write all these steps again with v squared and v. It will give you the same uh, idea to conclude that 3 is a factor of v. So, 3 is a prime factor of v squared and thus of v. That's what I'm trying to say. So, Something like that, in short, v equals 3 times l, where l is an integer. Let's go back to our rational uh, number that we assumed it's rational. u over v becomes 3k over 3v, which reduces to k over l. Because 3 is a common factor of u and v, It is a common factor of u and v. As you can see, 3 is in both. It contradicts the fact that u and v is in reduced form, and they don't have anything in common. No common factors such that u or v is the square root of 3, and u and v are relatively prime. But that shows that they are not relatively prime. They do have a common factor. They both divide by 3. So, square root of 3 cannot be written as u over v in reduced form. That is, square root of 3 is not rational. That is, square root of 3 is irrational. That should do it. It's less than 5 minutes, and that's my plan. To go over the material, display everything for you to the best that I can on one page. As you could see, it's one page. You could pause the video by hitting the space bar, look at it, and take some notes if you need to. I uh, take the time to write notes, and hopefully my method is helpful. Uh, saves time on your side. It takes time on my side to build it, but it's worth it in less time. I have like four videos after this, and we're gonna do it. By the way, I said less than four minutes. That's my mistake. I'm looking at the time. It's uh, 4.46 p.m. It's about 11 minutes. I'll see you in the next one. I'll try to keep them less than 10 minutes. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.